So the big question is this, how do small business owners like us grow our leadership, develop our teams and scale our business in a way that allows us to get our products and services out to the world yet still remain profitable? That is the question and this podcast will give you the answers. I'm Bradley Hamner and this is the Club Capital Leadership Podcast. Before we get into today's episode, did you know that Club Capital is the largest accounting and advisory firm for insurance agency owners in the country, providing monthly accounting, CFO services, and tax preparation? Check them out at club.capital. Welcome to another episode of the Club Capital Leadership Podcast. My name is Bradley Hamner, your host. In today's episode, we have a good one. Nathan Jamel. Nathan has spent the last two decades coaching top executives and thousands of leaders around the world on leadership employee coaching, selling skills, culture development, and a whole lot more. His clients span the globe in all industries from financial services, technology, healthcare, and many more. He's written and published four best-selling books, including his most recent book, Serve Up and Coach Down, which has been sold all around the world and has become really a guiding principle for a lot of organizations. Prior to becoming an author and working with organizations in a coaching capacity, He spent 20 years as an executive director in corporate America, as well as a small business owner of four companies himself. Needless to say, he's been in the trenches. Without further ado, here's my conversation with Nathan Jamel. Have you ever tried online marketing before and weren't sure if it was working? Maybe your rep talked about all the impressive features and stats and said things were going great, but you didn't know how all that tied into raw new policies written. Well, that's not the case with Direct Clicks. Direct Clicks is the premier Google Ads and SEO option exclusively for State Farm agents. Why? They're 100% resource oriented with an exclusivity guarantee. Every review call you have with your account manager focuses on what really matters to your business, and that's leads and call-ins received. Everything will get broken down to cost per lead received. By investing with direct clicks, you're going to free up time and energy to focus on what's most important in your agency and doing what it is you do best. This will be the best investment you make for your team by spending confidently and scaling your agency today with exclusive online marketing partner, Direct Clicks. Visit us at directclicksinc.com. Ambition is the first step towards success. It's time to level up your agency. And Coach P Consulting will help you do just that by using the same strategies he used to sell over 700 life insurance policies in 2021 alone. Now, this is not your regular one and done type coaching. You'll get personalized coaching two days a week, every week of the month, and you'll get a live look behind the scenes of his team training and an office that's performing at the highest level. There's a reason Coach P Consulting is the fastest growing coaching company for insurance agency owners in the country. Coach P will train your team alongside his own and show you the exact steps they're taking to achieve Chairman Circle, Exotic Travel, and Multi-Line Presence Club and be one of the few agents to be selected to have a third office. So whether your goal is to be at the top of your local market or amongst the best in the country, this training will give you the strategies and the tactics to get there. For just $250 a month, you'll get high-level coaching each week from someone who is already getting it done at that level and his strategies work and it's time to put them to work for you. Sign up at coachpeakconsulting.com and get your first full month for free when you mention the Club Capital Leadership Podcast. Nathan Jamail, welcome to the Club Capital Leadership Podcast. Thank you, Bradley. It's great to be here. Excited to have you. We always start with background and origin story. I know a lot of our listeners are very familiar with you, but for those of you who don't know your backstory, why don't you kind of take us up to where you are present day and how you got to where you are? Sure. I'll try and give you the Reader's Digest version. Um, so very young in my career, you know, uh, heck, I think I was 15 when I started working full time. Uh, school wasn't my thing, but what, what work was. So I was on that work program at school and uh, started selling retail back early, early in my life. And then ultimately, in, uh, when I graduated high school, um, it was either college or uh, work. And I tried college. And after about six weeks, the counselor was like, you know, you should probably wait. Uh, Mm -hmm. and come back when you're actually mature enough. And so I went to work. And then shortly after that, uh, was in retail for several years, got into uh, insurance. So life and health insurance. And and I'll never forget one time I went to my boss and I said, hey boss, I got it. Here's how I'm going to be successful. I'm going to change my name, my title, my business card from life insurance sales to financial planner. He's like, you're an idiot. He's like, you're 19 years old. No, whose finances are you going to plan? You sell life and health insurance. And and, and at the point, I think he was saying, uh, sell life insurance because you're young. What I learned to take it as be proud of what you do. 
Yeah. And, and focus, don't try and don't give yourself a fancy title. Your job is to serve people selling insurance. So I did that for several years and then I got into technology and uh, sold the first alphanumeric paging system, which most people today don't even know what that is. Hmm. Um, but uh, did uh, telecom and I did telecom for years. I went from that to wireless phones and, uh, and then in 2001, while I still had my corporate America job until 2005, um, I lived in seven different states. Uh, I owned uh, a couple of small businesses, one of them being three dry cleaners and eventually a mortgage company. So I kind of transitioned from corporate America to entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. And in 2005, um, I decided I was going to leave corporate America and go do the speaking business and write a book and, and all that. And so 2008, wrote my first book. And it was funny because I remember my accountant going, let me get this straight. You're going to leave this big corporate executive salary job to go do this, which shows no income. I'm like, mm -hmm. I know. Isn't that great? He goes, not really, but good luck. And yeah. so, <laughs> and so yeah, I wrote my first book in 08. And, uh, you know, as my wife and I always say, went broke twice and still made it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I think I shared with you in one of our conversations, I remember an end of 2000, I believe it was the end of 2007. Uh, and, and our book, we just finished, uh, maybe it was 2008 because the book was published in 08. And I went to my wife and say, Hey, we're, we're, we're out of money, mm -hmm. right? We have, we have 30 days. And, uh, and, uh, I said, I should probably get a VP job or go back into corporate America. And she says, no, I was born poor, raised poor. I'm not afraid of poor. Mm. You always, you always say you live in the dream. Well, chase your dream. And, you know, that encouragement, that belief, that support, it really just changed the world for us. Uh, and next thing you know, one client here, one client there, one speech here, one speech there. Here we are five books later and um, and just a great whirlwind of, of uh, success with, with a ton of gratitude. I, I tell people all the time, I'm worthy of none of it, but I'm grateful for all of it. Yeah. So that's, yeah. and, and so now what I do is I, I basically do keynote speeches, workshops and executive coaching. Um, I always tell people all, all the time, I haven't had a real job in, 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 in over 12 years. Yeah. I don't think I want one. No. Yeah. Once you go this way, you're never going back. You're never yeah. going back the other way, you know, but I have to tell you, I mean, truthfully, your books, I was struggling in leadership. Nobody had taught me leadership. I started my business in 2014, roughly or so. I read your book, leadership playbook, and then ended up uh, digesting sales leader playbook. So the belief that you had, and we're going to talk about beliefs in a little bit, because I've got some questions around that because you, sure. and, and, and the belief that your wife had in you, but that, that um, perseverance that you had honestly has impacted my life and has impacted so many lives of thousands of business owners and their teams around the country. And so I just think it's a mess amazing that, you know, that ultimately the belief that you had in yourself and the belief that your wife had in you and the message that you wanted to get out has been able to have that much of an impact to people and business owners and, and their teams and leaders around the country and, and the world for that matter. Uh, thanks. I, I will tell you, it's, um, and we'll talk about it. I think if you look back at even when I wrote the books and, and while we were successful in our teams in business is I always believe that belief trumps talent. Mm -hmm. um, it, it it's, I have a saying in my speeches, uh, belief creates conviction, conviction creates effort and effort creates results. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have conviction for something, nothing gets in your way. If you believe in something, you'll do it for the purpose of, of the impact versus because someone tells you to. And, and as leaders, it's real difficult, especially given, I say given today's time, but having finding good people has always been tough. Yeah, It's just now more visible for everyone. Um, but that the willingness to make a difficult decision because someone doesn't believe the way, the way they need to believe to be successful in your team mm -hmm. is, a tough, is a tough decision that leaders have to do if they're going to go to the next level. Do you think it's more that we have beliefs that we need to get rid of. So uh, some people refer to those as limiting beliefs. So I believe things that I don't need to believe versus I don't need, I need to adopt new beliefs that I don't currently have. Yeah. I think what happens is we allow fear and obstacles to become part of our belief system and limit us, right? You call it limiting beliefs and, and it's because we accept them. Mm -hmm. Right. If there's there's a um, there, there's a there's a, a saying out there where it says, if I told you to walk across a two by four or a two by six and I laid it on the ground, you'd do it. No problem. But put it on top of a 20 story building. Yeah. 
you wouldn't do it. If I put on top of two, a 20 story building and caught that other building on fire and put your child on the other side of it, you'd run across it like it's nothing. That's right. Yeah. And, 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 and it's because the reward was worth the sacrifice. And I think that ties into our belief. Mm -hmm. I think when you believe in something and, and you believe that you can make an impact or you can achieve a goal, I, I think you'll do whatever it takes to get there. And when that result is no longer worth our sacrifice, I think we start to allow ourselves to say, well, it's not possible. In life insurance, right? Yeah. Uh, no one wants to buy life insurance. It's, it's much easier than saying, I need to get better at selling life insurance, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? It's, um, I use it with my coaching clients all the time. A lot of people call it the marketplace. You know, well, the marketplace determines this. Marketplace is a fancy word for competitors. Mm -hmm. And if the marketplace is determining your value, what you're really saying is that you can't find the way to sell enough value that people will pay more for you versus someone else. Mm -hmm. It's easier to blame marketplace than ourselves. It's easier to blame a, a belief versus our belief. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. I know that there's had to be times, not only whenever you decided to make the leap. I mean, that was one time, but I'm sure there's been times along the way that you yourself have faced those beliefs about like, well, who am I to do this? I mean, honestly, I was that way about the podcast when I first launched it two and a half years ago. It's like, you know, who am I to be starting a podcast? Why would I do that? And, and so it's one thing to have the belief, but it's another thing to believe it and not push past it. So for those of us that say like, yeah, I, I do struggle with that, or even we see it in our teams whenever they're struggling with a belief, what are the things that you've done and that you teach other people to then push past those? Yeah, listen, we struggle with all, we all struggle with it. You, you know, I have, to, I have to tell myself all the time when I do a speech is I had to remind myself, I wrote the book. Like, you know, a lot of people say, well, I, I didn't write the book, right? That's the, a, a joke. And I'm like, Nathan, you actually wrote the book. So yeah. you have that right to go do it. And, and at the end of the day, people call me an expert on this, right? And, and what makes me any more justified to be an expert than someone said I'm an expert? Yeah. Um, it's funny. We have no trouble uh, believing that when other people tell us we're good enough, we have no trouble like it because they said it, we're good enough. Yeah. And sometimes we just got to realize that because we say it, we're good enough. Yeah. And so uh, I guess my answer to your question is we all have some level of self-doubt. Mm -hmm. The question is, do you allow your self-doubt or self-questioning to stop you from doing what you know you need to be doing? Mm. Um, there's no, there's no certificate. There's no license. There's no number of years of experiences or, or struggles that you have to have a certain limit to say, okay, once you hit this limit of either uh, licensing or certifications or struggles, then you are qualified to do it. Sure. You've got to believe in your heart that you are qualified to make an impact in whatever you are doing. And you have to take that self-doubt, pour it out and fill it up with competence and, and confidence and competence. And because when people perceive us to be confident, they'll assume that we're confident. Yeah, that's right. And, and we have to do the same thing for us. Yeah. Um, I, I, last part of that is I, I was at dinner with a client one night and I loved it. And he says, uh, I said, I, whenever I'm having dinner with a client and depending on where they are in their life, right? let's say they've been married for 40 years. I was just with another client. He's been married for 55 years. And I said, what's the secret to marriage? So I get my, give me my nugget. I meet someone who has got three daughters like I do or kids like I do. And I say, okay, give me the, give me the, give me the father nugget. Yeah. Uh, I met the CEO and I said, give me the, give me the leadership nugget, the life nugget. Right. And he says, I want to be fearless. Mm -hmm. I said, okay. He was not brave. Brave means we act despite our fear. He said, fearless means we don't fear any judgment. Some of the people that we think are nuts or crazy uh, in the political world or the uh, business world who just act to spider when things are nuts, you know, look at them, Elon Musk and yeah. uh, the Jeff Bezos, you know, you know, when, when Jeff Bezos told his buddies, hey, I'm going to start a bookstore on the internet. They're like, you're an idiot. Right. <laughs> uh, but one of my sayings I'd love to say is the difference between being a genius and idiot is success. Oh, I love that. I love that. That's so true as well. You know, because if you've had the success, you had the success, you're not an idiot. I heard this before. If you were like in a foreign country and you went out to get a coffee, like my uh, in-laws are in Italy right now yeah. and they get a coffee at a coffee shop and they sit down and start talking to somebody and the person starts talking to them about business. It's easy for them to blow it off. But if somebody taps them on the shoulder and says, 
hey, do you know that that's a billionaire? He's the richest person in Italy. The framing of that is just like totally different. It's like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Let me go back and talk to this guy. You know what I mean? Right. I can get something from this. This is some knowledge here. I can gain. Yeah. 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 Um, that's funny. So I know there's so many people that started this way. You did. And so I know you can really speak to this. I, there were so many questions I was going to ask you. One of them that I think is really valid is the transition from being in sales yourself to being in sales leadership. And so, so many people, like they, they were really good in another office and because of their sales success themselves, they get plucked to start their own agency, to start their own business. Well, now the game has changed because it's instead of you doing it, now you have to lead other people doing it. It's a totally different skill set, And I think people really struggle with that, you know? Um, and so can you just speak to the transition from going from being in sales yourself to sales leadership and how our beliefs and our skills have to change? This is a very common issue and it's, it's common in, in agency. It's also common in all the business. We tend to promote the best salesperson to be the sales manager of corporate America. Yep. And in agency, you know, you get, you get a, a young agent or a team member and they're going to be a superstar. And here's the thing. It's the same reason why some great superstar football players become announcers and not coaches. Totally true. Right? It's yep. it, you've coaching and playing are, are completely different skill sets and activities. They both require the knowledge of the sport. They both require the discipline, but coaching is not about being the best at that position. It's about making people who are great better mm -hmm. and it's a development. And so one of the biggest my, mistakes we see when someone goes from agency to agent or leader, an individual contributor to a coach or a, a, I don't want to say coach because that's, that's giving way too much credit to all leaders because you can be a leader and not be a coach. In fact, most more common than not, most people are leaders and not coaches. And so when you do that, the question becomes, do you know how you got to where you are? Right. Did you did. In other words, I tell people all the time I talk about practice. If you read my books, you know, I'm real big on practice. Yep. And when I do speeches, this is where people start to at first they sit back. They go, well, I don't need to practice. I mean, have you seen me? Look how good I am. And, and, and my challenge to them is I said, listen, I'm not here to give you religion, whatever you believe in. I uh, we all have. A, I believe we have a maker and I believe that God gave you these gifts. And, and I think your people that raised you and, and influenced you and your chemical gave you your attributes. And so my challenge to people is if, you're, if you've been successful purely on your gifts and your attributes and you never perfected your skill, you never practiced, it's hard to teach other people how to be great at something if you don't know the disciplines of practice. And most people who are in sales are successful purely off their gifts. Yeah. And my challenge to people is, listen, if you're successful with the gifts you've been given, A, you can't take credit for it because you didn't do anything. They were gifts. And B, how much more successful could you be if you actually practice? This is the difference between someone who has got uh, a naturally gifted athletic presence and then becomes a superstar athlete at a certain sport. And so here's the thing. Because you're a top agent doesn't mean you're going to be a, a, a great coach or leader. Mm -hmm. um, you have to decide, is making other people better part of your focus? Are you willing to spend more time developing them than handling the problems in which you face? Mm. Most agents spend more time with customers than they do their team members. Yeah. Most agents spend more time in the office doing administrative work than they do making their teammates better. And there's a difference between meeting with your team, like, hey, what's going on? Who are you going to call today? And, and what went on yesterday? There's a difference between updates and communication and teaching and developing. I, I tell, listen, as leaders, when we get from correcting people, like you listen to one of your team members make a call and it wasn't right, you correct them. Coaches don't correct only. Mm -hmm. They prepare first. They say, listen, you're going to make this call, Bradley. Let's, let's scrimmage it. Let's practice. Let me teach you before you make the call. Yeah. And, and, and so coaches are pre uh, are, uh, they get in front of the opportunity and not correct after the opportunity. Um, so I, I think that is the difference. Are you an agency owner looking to grow your revenue, increase your bottom line and better manage your taxes? Club Capital is here to help. 
Club Capital is the largest accounting and advisory firm for insurance agents in the country, providing monthly accounting, tax strategy, and CFO services. Way more than bookkeeping and your everyday run-of-the-mill tax prep, Club Capital is focused on providing financial and tax advisory services that help you plan and forecast your agency's performance. Their financial dashboards and agency forecasting tools help you better understand your agency's historical performance, create and measure future targets, and see how your agency compares to your peers around the country. Imagine what it would be like to understand the impact to your bottom line when deciding to hire a new employee or forecast the impact rate changes or commission rates will have on your business. With over $200 million in tracked annual revenue and $140 million in tracked annual expenses, Club Capital has the data and the team to help you make better informed decisions for your agency. They will help you turn that back office stress into the backbone of your agency's success by giving you the tools to take your agency and your leadership to the next level. Visit club.capital today to book a solution overview with one of our business consultants. Club Capital, way more than a CPA firm. There's a reason why great salespeople don't always make great coaches. And the main reason why is because they don't know what makes them great. Man, that is so good. That was worth every bit of you coming on here. That is such a good answer. You know, you along those lines, you do draw a distinction when I was preparing around scrimmaging and role play. And you're like, nobody really likes to role play. And I think that maybe it was Socrates. Somebody back then said, you know, wisdom first starts with a definition of terms. And what ends up happening is we use these terms like interchangeably. But I think one of the things you do a really good job of is saying like, no, this is what training is. This is what scrimmaging is. This is what role playing is. We need to define these terms so that whenever we use them the right way, we understand what it is we're talking about. Bradley, it's funny. So I have a a couple of financial planner uh, coaching clients, and and it's not a a lot in that world because it, the coaching is pretty expensive if you're in a small agency, yeah. but I have a couple of guys who have three or four agencies. And so uh, the cost investment versus reward is worth it to them. And it's funny. I was literally just doing a coach session with one of them two days ago. And he's talking about uh, his, his team member who sells life insurance and they do annual reviews of the policies. Right. And, and he says, Nathan, here's the deal. I don't know if she doesn't, I don't know. She's got, she's great at client services. She's great at communicating clients love her, but she's not getting any business out of them. Like Mm -hmm. she's not sell, she's not doing the right sales activity because she's not leaving anything. I said, well, that's fair. And he goes, and I've coached her. I said, you sure you've coached her? He says, yeah, I've coached her. I said, let's see if you've coached her. When you sat in the meeting with her, how'd she do? Well, I haven't sat in the meeting with her. Okay. So, so you don't know what she's doing in the meeting. So how, how do you how do you expect her to help her get better if you don't even know what she's doing? Yeah. The problem is you're gauging what she needs to do based off a result and not yeah. her actions. Yeah. And I said, uh, I said, so what do you mean you coached her? He said, Well, I, I told her the word track and we went over what and and, I, and he goes, I know she's doing it right because she has the right answers. I said, yeah. No, no. You know, she's asking the right questions, but she's not pivoting from those questions into the value and the impact which she needs to make. And so, again, you can't adequately say that she's doing right or wrong because you don't know what she's doing. So you're not coaching. I say, here's my challenge to you. Before you make an assessment, is she in the right position or not? You need to make sure you invest in her and prepare her, right? scrimmage with her and then sit in in that meeting with her and see if if she's saying the wrong thing because really in our world especially in financial world you know, i just tell people selling's hard because selling you have to get someone excited about something in most cases they're not ready to buy yet when when people are ready to buy something they don't need to be sold they just buy it mm-hmm. hence amazon but insurance is even harder. This is why insurance is so hard, and even investments, right? Because if I, if you want to sell me a, a, a whole life policy or a universal life policy or, or a life policy in general, hey, I got to pay for something that I never get to use. And if I do get to use it, something really bad has to happen to me, mm-hmm. right? So before I get value, something bad, ha- that's a tough sell. Mm-hmm. But because it's so tough, it's, it's more imperative than anything we do. Mm-hmm. I mean, you guys in financial planning truly – and I'll say this tongue in cheek or lightly, uh, what you do changes people's lives. It determines the trajectory of people's lives. Hmm. You know what? You just saying that right there, 
people need to be reminded often more than we need to be taught. And you just reminding people about that, that are listening to this is, is, is absolutely gold because that is a belief almost going back to what we talked about earlier, going back to belief. Okay. So I never just, as you were talking about watching somebody in action, I never have thought about this analogy, but it's like the coach who goes in practice and they have practice on the football, on the practice field. And then they tell the team, okay, now you guys go play the game. I'm not going to even watch the game or watch film. You guys just come back and tell me if you won or lost. And then I'm going to tell you, you know what? You didn't, you didn't do, you're not doing a good job. It's like, well, you didn't even watch the game. I've never actually come up with that analogy. Yeah. That's a great analogy. Yeah. yeah, How do you correct someone if you never saw them play the game? It's very true, but here's the thing. I mean, the biggest struggle is allocation of time. Mm-hmm. Most people who are listening is going to say, Nathan, that's great, brother. I love your idea and your theory. But in the real world, we don't have the time. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you the same thing my wife tells me all the time. If it's important to you, you'll make the time. Yeah. If you're not making the time, it's just not important to you. And, and so here's what I will uh, I'll show with you is when I start off a keynote speech, I ask a question to the audience of leaders. And I say, who wish your employees were as committed to the team and the organization as you are? And every one of them raised their hand. And I say, I think what you're going to find, if you don't hate me when I'm done and you do love me, I think what you're going to find is most of our employees are not as committed to the team and us and our organization as we are is because what you're going to find out is we maybe are not as committed to them as we think we are. Hmm. And we ask people to, you know, go the extra mile, close the deal, work extra hours, do what it takes to get the, hit the goal. Yet, how often do we spend time teaching them and making them better? And, 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 then, and then we ask them, you know, be a good part of the team. Yet, you know, we want, want you to be, be a, a positive contributor to the team. Yet, how often do we have people on our team who are negative in, ne- negatively impacting our team members, and yet we still accept them? And, and even though we know they're not the right fit, we keep them there because either they do enough to to make our payroll or they have been with us for a long time, whatever, but we sacrifice the very thing we think is important for the short-term result. Yeah. Um, and so th- there's a lot about, I-, I tell people being a great coach, is like being a parent, mm-hmm. Hey, we, we just got to quit messing up. We're, we're never going to be great at it. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, I have four kids from 26 to 10. My number one goal is to make the less person. I just want to mess the next kid up a little bit less than I messed the last kid up. <laughs> right in coaching i just want to coach a little bit better today than i did yesterday i want to ask you two questions huh? um i want to ask you around a topic that most people probably would not know that you actually know a lot about care a lot about and that is as being a leader self-care now as i was doing my research you actually own a ranch retreat. Uh, your family does. I do. And um, so you have spoken about this, about the, the value and the importance of not giving it lip service, of actually rest and rejuvenation and why that's so important to our energy that we then ultimately give to our team, et cetera. Can you just speak to that? Yeah. So, you know, people ask me about life work balance all the time. I, I don't believe in life work balance. I, I believe in life work separation. I've written articles on this. I've spoken about it. Um, I think the biggest problem we have is that we don't, we're never fully engaged in something. And I'll give you an example. Uh, you see people at the park with their kids and on their phones the whole time. Yeah. Um, you see people at work and they're on the phone with the family members all the time. So my, my ask of everyone is, listen, be present no matter where you are. Now, it's easy for me to be present with my children on there because I'm a kid. So I like to play in the playground. Yeah. Right. I, I, you know, my wife makes fun of me. She goes, I, she has five kids. I have four. Um, <laughs> right. And, because I'm a child. Um, and, and, and by the way, let's be clear. I'm not perfect at it either. But I think by being present in whatever you're doing and I've had some good years, I'm more uh, focused on my personal health. You know, I, for six years, I worked out six days a week, no matter what city I was in. I was in the best shape of my life. I felt great. And, and it was it become, because I made I made my fitness a routine. Yeah. Well, now with the ranch, um, the fitness, we call it ranch fit now instead of CrossFit. And, and, and now it's about getting our minds right, you know? Yeah. Um, this, this, the idea of the retreat ranch that came up with is my wife does women's retreats all over the world. 
when we got married 16 years ago, we always said we're going to open a bed and breakfast when we retire in Costa Rica and never tell our kids where we live. And, and we we're going to, you know, have couples come in. We're just going to entertain. And I was going to take the men fishing and she was going to do yoga with the, the, the ladies. And we were going to create this bonding experience. Well, then all of a sudden 2020 comes up and she says, Hey, I think we've merged both ideas. I want to, I want my own retreat ranch. The best use of money is to buy back your time. And one of the best ways to do that is with a virtual assistant. Rock Solid Virtual Assistants brings together top business leaders with exceptional virtual assistants to build successful, relationship-driven teams. The services they provide range from graphic design and marketing to executive admin assistance and everything in between. There are many virtual assistant companies on the market to choose from, but at Rock Solid, their processes and passion for what they do place them at the very top of that list. Not only is their hiring process exceptional, which nets them the very best assistance, but they also provide superior support to their teams for the duration of your time with them. The matching process at Rock Solid is unlike any other, and they have the track record to prove it. Their hands-on approach has proven to increase the success rate of their teams exponentially. So if you're looking to build a rock solid team for your business, reach out to Tracy and the team for a no pressure discovery call at rocksolidassistance.com. They value your success as if it were their own because it is. And I'm like, and I, and you need to know this. I do whatever my wife says. So I'm like, I think that's a great idea. And what it's really created us is a, is a sanctuary of, of mindset. I mean, we get to spend time together. If I'm not on stage, I'm on the ranch. Yeah. Um, and it's funny. I, I, I found, you know, <laughs> I, I, I know how to plumb now, right? Hey. I, I get my, I have, I have tractors and I will tell you there, there's a, there's a, I put my audio books on and I get my skid steer and which is a, a close and I just go knock down trees or I, I smooth <laughs> around it. or, and, and so it's really important. It, it's amazing how much reach, how well we recharge when we take away my wife and I leave once a quarter yeah. and we go for 48 hours to you know, two to three days and we unplug. And what we do is we sit down and we, we spend half the day kind of doing our thing, whether it's getting massages or, or just kind of restoring ourselves. And then the other half of the day, we, we work on our business plan for the year. <laughs> and, mm-hmm. and it's, a, and, and then, and then we go and at night, we'll have a nice day and we do this every year or, you know, we try to do it every quarter, um, but we definitely do it a couple of times a year. I love it. All right. My last question is, uh, so I reached out to a good friend of mine and I said, he, he's a big fan of yours and has read all of your books. And I said, Hey, uh, I'm get to interview Nathan on the podcast. What would you ask him? He said, you know, I'd love to know about focus is like, how do you determine what to be able to focus on? And, and I think as a, as a leader, there's just so many things, you know, we were talking about our team and, but I need to, I need to meet with clients and I've got to hit these numbers and I've got this conference call to be on and all these things. Like there's just so many demands. There's so many inputs. It's hard to sometimes kind of like get up, get above the clouds and be able to look at it and say, you know what? I need to go focus on this. I think Naval Ravikant says what you work on is more important than how hard you work. Mm -hmm. Um, And he's not diminishing hard work. He's just saying, what are you working on? Can you speak to like just focus and attention? Yeah. So I'll give you two thoughts. Uh, One is I just, in fact, I'm listening to the book again. Um, It's called the one thing by Keller. Yeah. And the one thing, and and that's what he talks about, right? The one thing, right? What's the one thing that you need to do today to get you where you need to be tomorrow? What's the one thing you need to focus on in your business? And so as I'm listening to that book, I start to internalize it. Um, And, and so what's, what's my one thing now at the same time, I'm going to tell you that we need to understand that there's one thing, but under that one thing, there's three more one things. Yeah. Yeah. And so let's take agency just because I know a lot of your listeners are in the financial sector and here we got your, you know, just like being any small business owner, when you're an agency, when you have own agency, you're the, you're the vice president, you're the salesperson, you're the janitor, you're the balance payable, you know, and, and all that stuff. So what's your one thing? And, And here's what I believe. The one thing that we need at agency is to create revenue. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because without revenue, nothing else, nothing else happens. Yep. Now the question becomes, what's the one thing that helps create the most revenue? I believe if you're a leader of agency, your number one thing should be every day you do is teaching your people to be better. Yeah. Because you meet with a client and you do a good job. You get one new business, you get a new policy or a new home household, whatever it may be. You work with your three team members and they go out and do one thing. They get three new 
policies, right? Yep. And so it's, it's about expanding and developing. I, I believe if, if you go out and work five days, a week, five days a week and meet with clients every, every day for five days, you're going to get that amount of return on that investment. And that week might be a better week than me, who if I have three employees, I work with my three team members. And at the end of the week, they didn't sell that much. Can I spend all my time with them and not the customers? Yep, you probably beat me that week. Yeah. But the next week, I might have gained two on you and the week after that and the week after that. And if I'm constantly making my people better, here's what you got to find. I can only make me so good. Mm -hmm. I'm amazingly enough, we might make our people much better than we are. Mm -hmm. And so I think what the idea to answer your focus is like anything else, we're going to get out of focus. Mm -hmm. The idea is to get out, get back in focus as fast as possible. Right. Uh, uh, the one thing Keller says is know when you're know when you're are your productive times. Mm. Right. No, no. If you're busy, if you're productive, like if morning is your clear minded, that is your that's where you are the most efficient. Then that's where we need to do our priority of our one thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I think I think, again, goes back to, you know, everything ties into this. I, I think if we're focused, if we believe in something, it's easier to focus on it. Mm hmm. Um, so true. It, it, when we're trying to do stuff that we don't believe in, it's really difficult to focus. Yeah. And so, um, I, I do believe that. I, I think I think we have to identify what that one thing is and what that one thing below that one thing is. And I struggle with it just like everyone else. I mean, look at my world. If you ask me what one thing is, it's being on stage. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I've written five books, so I've got to focus on selling books so I can get on stage. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then and then I do executive coaching. And so even though my one thing is uh, getting on stage, my true value mm. is having the impact. Because if I have an impact with people, just like on your podcast, if people listen to this and they go, man, I got three nuts. That was, a, that was, that was worth my 30 minutes or 40 minutes of my time. Everything else comes together for me. So true. So, this has been awesome. It's been a great pleasure of mine to have you on the podcast. I know some people are going to want to reach out to you. Where can they connect with you? And even if they want to know a little bit more about the ranch, where would you point them to? Uh, where, yeah, so, where they go? Uh, yeah, so uh, NathanJamel.com is my website. Uh, I, I encourage everyone to follow us on social media. We, we uh, are getting more active and more active uh, in social media. So, uh, but NathanJamel.com, uh, we have an Instagram page. And then the retreat, is the retreat the retreatranch.com. Um, and if you want some good entertainment, uh, my wife and I have, uh, she's always, she has an Instagram uh, story or page, whatever you call it. And it's called the, the Retreat Ranch, Marble Falls, Texas. Watch that. You'll, you'll see, you, you won't see this, Nathan. You're going to see Nathan with the cowboy hat, the torn up jeans, and the mud on his face. And then on top of that, we have a podcast my wife and I do. Um, and it's called Happy Hour Retreat Ranch. In fact, we're getting ready to record a couple today. Um, but yeah, get in touch with NathanJamel.com. Look us up. Uh, you want to do an executive retreat at the ranch? We do that now. So bring your team members and uh, we'll have a little fun, ride some horses and, and do some leadership. That's awesome. That's awesome. Nathan, it's been a pleasure having you on. I hope to have you back on in the future. Love to. Thank you, Bradley, so much. And that was great having Nathan on. He was definitely somebody that I was really excited to be able to have on the podcast. And what a what a treat to have him on. I really do hope that he comes back in the future. There's so many different really takeaways from that podcast. I think one of the things that really stood out to me when I asked him the question about going from sales or in production to sales leadership, one of the things that was really unique about that is he gave a very specific answer that I had not really heard people give before. And that was, is that if you have the gifts, it's easy to just say, well, you know, this is God-given ability. I don't really know how to do this because you've not taken the time to work on and develop your own skills so that you can go from really good to great or even great to even better, which is something I know Nathan says quite often. You've not invested, so you can't actually coach it because you've not done the work on yourself to understand how you've gotten to go from good to great or great to even better. And I thought that that was a really distinct uh, message that he gave there around that question. You know, a couple other things that stood out to me would be, you know, whenever he said, when he asked the question about like our teams not being as fully committed to the business as we are, but then he also flipped that around and said, you know, well, are you really committed to your team? I, I think that one landed pretty hard with me. 
And then also whenever I had the conversation around self-care and then the idea of work-life separation, I've never heard that before. And then just never being fully engaged. I mean, I know I, I have kids, my kids are 11 and seven and, and I have to really check myself at times, you know, I'll, I'll spend all day with them. And then, you know, if we go to dinner and my wife and I want to, you know, have a glass of wine and just be able to talk, it's easy to just grab your phone or be distracted and, and not be fully present with your wife or with your kids or your significant other, whatever that is. And I think, I think it's a good reminder. It really is to just wherever you are, be there. So make sure you check him out. Go to NathanJamail.com. Yeah, definitely check out the ranch retreat too. That'd be a cool place to uh, take your leadership team, take your team out, uh, maybe even get together with your study group or mastermind that you're a part of and go down there. I definitely am going to uh, take maybe check him uh, out and take him up on that offer to go down there. I think that would be really cool to just completely get away. That's, uh, that's definitely more my pace. We truly couldn't do this podcast and have amazing guests on like Nathan, if it wasn't for our podcast sponsors. So let me give them a shout out. Direct Clicks, Coach P, Rock Solid, and of course, Club Capital. You know, I've talked about the importance of developing in your team, but Nathan was just talking about this, right? Like, are you really developing your in your team and having the scrimmage and the role play? Well, that's exactly the type of development that you're going to get whenever you work with David Peterson and Coach P. Go to Coach P consulting.com. Make sure you mention that uh, you heard about him on the Club Capital Leadership Podcast. He'll give you your very first month uh, for free. Why would you not take him up on that? That's eight training sessions for you and your team. Just like if you're going to go buy a new vehicle, you want to take it for a test drive. Once you do the exact same thing, go to coachpconsulting.com. Now you've heard me say, I'm certainly not the first to say it, uh, but having A players on your team and whenever you have A players on your team, you're wanting them to start at a high level so that through your training and development and then to get to kind of get indoctrinated into your culture, that way you can take them from, you know, whatever, seven or an eight to, to a nine or 10. And so you really want to start with really quality people to begin with, uh, whoever's coming on your team. Well, there's definitely the same thing is true whenever you have an executive assistant or a creative marketing assistant. I mean, that's what Rockstyle does. They vet and find the very best people, the very best assistants, and they want to plug them with the very best people. Look, they are in demand. They have a waiting list to get started, and there's a reason why, but it is well worth the wait. The thing that an executive assistant is going to give you is the single most important thing, and it, it, will, it will help give your time back. What is more important than your time? There's nothing more important than time. Well, you know, your time and your attention is right what are you giving your attention to which is why i asked the question around uh focus to see what nathan would say around there so go to rocksolidassistance.com go to rocksolidassistance.com and just have a conversation with them about you know what would it look like for me to have an executive assistant at 10 hours a week i promise you if you if you do this you will be surprised about how much they can get done i know it doesn't seem like a lot especially if you've never hired somebody who is a fractional team member instead of full-time, but just trust me on that. It want to be one of the best investments in your business and in you that you could ever make. Uh, just yesterday at the time of this recording, I was talking to um, Matt, the founder of Direct Clicks, and we were just talking about some of the results that they get for clients. And the bottom line is, you know, at the end of the day, you want somebody that's going to give you personalized service. You want somebody that's going to care about you and your business. You want the exclusivity. You want all of those things. But you know what you want more than anything? You want results. You want to know that you're actually going to be able to grow your business with leads that are quality and at the lowest price possible. You want to be able to have really great inbound leads coming to your sales team so that they can have they can hit their numbers and they can have a really great conversion percentage. And that is exactly what Direct Clicks do, does. And they've got some really amazing products they're going to be rolling out in the future that I know about. Obviously, won't mention one here, but they're continuing. And one thing I love about their team is that they absolutely are focused on quality. And they're never going to put something out that, they, that they're not proud of. And it's just really easy to put something out in the short term that is uh, kind of a crappy product, uh, but it takes more work. Um, on the front side to put out and put together a really great product. And that's exactly what the team at Direct Clicks has done. Go to directclicksinc.com. And last but not least, but if you're looking to possibly bring on an assistant, but you don't know if you can afford it, well, if you were working with Club Capital, you could go in there, plug it into 
you know, the scenario planner, the forecast tool that they have now, and you'd be able to say, okay, how is this going to affect cash flow? How is this going to affect profitability? When do I think that I would get a return on my investment? You ever wonder that? You ever wonder what it's going to do to your cash and what your monthly run rate is on average and what your expenses are at? And if I make this decision, when am I going to start getting a return from it? You ever thought about that? I'm sure many of you have, but you just don't know exactly where to start. That's exactly the kind of decisions uh, and insights that you'll be able to get whenever you work with Club Capital. Go to club.capital today. All right, everyone. That's a great episode. It was awesome having Nathan on. We appreciate all of you so much. And uh, hopefully we are providing you uh, some great value on your time and on your attention. Until next episode, lead well. So the big question is this. How do small business owners like us grow our leadership, develop our teams, and scale our business in a way that allows us to get our products and services out to the world, yet still remain profitable? That is the question, and this podcast will give you the answers. I'm Bradley Hamner, and this is the Club Capital Leadership Podcast. Hey, before we get into today's episode, did you know that Club Capital is the largest accounting and advisory firm for insurance agency owners in the country, providing monthly accounting, CFO services, and tax preparation? Check them out at club.capital.